Hi folks, David Watts here with another uh, video tutorial how-to uh, using Luminar Neptune version 1.20. And this is a video I wanted to make for a little time, but, but thought about how to do it, and I hope this is helpful. I wanted to show the difference between editing a JPEG file and a RAW file. Uh, so what I have open here are really two sessions in Luminar. So on the left side, maybe a little hard to see because I've got the screens overlapping. Uh, on the left side, this is my JPEG image. On the right side, that's my RAW image. And uh, the two sessions are overlapping. Uh, the, this is the same, uh, same picture uh, taken same time. Uh, Fuji X-T2, uh, you know, set it up to take a RAW and JPEG at the same time. So same exact moment of time, same conditions, same settings, same everything. This is what the camera spits out. And I just thought it'd be interesting to see, you know, how do we feel about the results we get? Um, how, how does the editing process go? What can I do with one that I can't do with the other? And, and there's no predetermined outcome on this. I, I haven't run through this and scripted anything. We're just going to kind of explore together and see what we like. And I'll say generally that the JPEGs are great coming out of the Fuji cameras. Sometimes we think, eh, I can't do much better than that. Uh, in other cases, uh, we say, yeah, it's good to have the RAW. It's always there. Uh, you know, we, we do non-destructive editing with it. Of course, we also do non-destructive editing with the JPEG, the way Luminar works and the way we save the files. Um, let's see what we do. And, and at the outset, you might notice right away the, the visible differences. Uh, one of the things I notice, and, and by the way, let me back up. I tried to pick a fair image. This is not some image that's grossly overexposed or underexposed. It's just, you know best effort image, something I took uh, when I was visiting Iceland. Nice little uh, fishing boat, I'd say, but it's really a tourist boat. Lundi is the Icelandic word for puffin. Uh, so anyway, um, tried to pick a fair image, uh, something we could work with fairly that might be typical of what you might do. So uh, with that said in mind, just looking at the image itself, one of the things I notice is I think the JPEG sort of obscures some of the detail uh, here in the white of this wood and seems like we've got a bit more of that left here. Uh, and that might be typical that the, the highlight areas, the brighter areas are a little more, you know, we lose some of the detail there. Uh, but I would also say the wood, which is, this is probably mahogany, uh, maybe looks a little richer here uh, than it does with the raw file uh, on the right side. And, and so, you know, one of the rules of thumb I use uh, is that JPEG files tend to look better coming out of the camera, right? RAW files need development. We need to do things with them. Uh, the good news of RAW files is that we can do a lot more with them generally. We can push the boundaries more, extract more information. But the bad news is we generally have to do more with them uh, than the JPEG files. So the JPEGs are great for quick or limited editing. Um, the RAW files give us more latitude, but we have to do a bit more work. So anyway, let's see the possibilities. Why don't we start with the, um, uh, the file on the left, the, uh, uh, the JPEG file, and I always like to start and uh, try to get a good straight horizon. That's just one of the basic things we can do to make the picture look better. So let's see if we can uh, do that real quick. We obviously lose a little bit of the image, but using this uh, section of the horizon on the left side, I think that looks a good bit better. Let's do the same on the RAW file. And obviously, you know, that won't... Uh, create any substantial, uh, no difference between that, that level of editing. You might notice here the water looks a little brighter and uh, a little more vivid, maybe a little more murky here. One of the first things I tend to do is the, use the accent, the AI filter, and just see where that gets me. Does that help? Does it, does it do some good? And, and then it's fun to turn it off and, and back on and, and toggle it back and forth so our eyes can sort of capture the difference. And it looks to me like it makes some improvement brings up the wood a little bit. Maybe it's too much, but that's, that's personal judgment. I might back it off myself. And uh, on this side, let's see what, what we do with the, uh, the boost. And, and one of the things is, that's true is we can probably get away with more uh, with the raw file if we want to. And it, to me, it doesn't appear quite as uh, heavy, um, even though I'm using more boost on the raw file. You'll notice the wood texture here. To me, it just seems a bit more realistic here. It, it seemed to get uh, a little, um, a little maybe orangish, if you will. If you'll notice in this section, it's pretty dark, but over in the corresponding uh, piece, we've still got good detail here. Uh, up in here, we've still got good detail of the, the rugged wood decking, and here it's, it's a bit more obscured. Uh, the rope, on the other hand, looks you know, a little less vivid and, and more vivid over here. So these are just some of the, the subtle differences. I even notice 
what looks like a little bit of a water stain or mark that over here is pretty much lost, at least with our current edits so far. So, so far I've kind of done the same thing on both, which is very simple, just the, the boost and, and straightening the horizon. Let's check white balance. Now this is an area where we'll have less options on the JPEG because all we really have is as shot. And while we can use the eyedropper, and let's look for something that would be roughly kind of gray, and we're not seeing a lot. Maybe, maybe I can even take this mark up here as something slightly gray. Um, and did it make much difference? Uh, not a huge difference. The camera probably got it pretty close to right. But if we needed uh, some substantial uh, white balance improvement, you, you'll notice if I go toward the extremes here, you'll see that there's not a huge amount of latitude. It, it gets real blue pretty quick, real cold, and, and then there's certainly this normal area, and then it gets uh, real warm kind of fast. Uh, let's go back and try to set this at something that seems halfway realistic. On the raw file side, you see it, it preserves my standard sort of choices, daylight, cloudy, shade, tungsten, and so forth. Let's just try cloudy because it was an overcast day. And, and maybe that's pretty good. On the other hand, we can try also, like we did on the other picture, uh, maybe this is kind of gray, gray enough for us to use. And if we don't like it, we can, we can change that. Just might suggest that we have a lot more latitude, it seems to me, um, in the, uh, the color balance, the white balance here. Let's go back and try to set it roughly uh, something that's realistic. And these won't be perfectly identical, but uh, we're just looking for uh, um, our best available edits in a quick period of time. All right, let's just do a few other things. We'll do one at a time here. Uh, just try to make this the best picture we can. Typically, I'll, I'll look at the highlights a little bit, see if there's any improvements here. I don't see anything substantial with the highlights or midtone. I'm using the advanced contrast uh, filter. Uh, this will allow us to boost the shadows a little bit. And I kind of like what it's doing to the wood. Uh, this, again, mahogany wood. Let's do a little bit of that. Uh, let's look at the structure just a bit and see if this brings out some more texture for us. And I think it certainly does. Let's turn it off. Yeah, you certainly see what it's done to the wood there. Uh, we bring it up and we get the more rustic look. Uh, we're seeing the layers of paint and wood and just the, the age of the, the boat. And clarity might help us just a bit as well. Again, it brings out some of this detail. And let's try vibrance just a bit to make the see if we can make it pop just a little bit more. I like the yellow uh, along the edge of the boat, certainly the wood, certainly the, the color of the rope, kind of vibrant. And let's try that without getting it crazy. Kind of like the yellow, I think it's lighthouse out here in the distance also. And uh, then a little bit with shadows. Again, we had that before in the advanced contrast, but I I, I sort of work these tools a little bit against each other and see which one gives me the better results. All right, I kind of like that. And finally, just a little bit of brightness. And do I need anything with contrast? I don't know. To me, that feels like a pretty good image. Did we do any real improvements? Let's see. So we started with this, and we ended with this. As compared, you know, the beginning, the way it came out of camera, we've lost a lot of detail there in the, the white part of the wood. Uh, with our adjustments, we've brought out some of this mahogany, some of the texture of the wood. I think it, it's, it's an improvement. You might do it different, but for me, it's an improvement. Back to the raw file. Let's see what we get. Anything here with highlights me, we might want to, uh, to try, and I don't see any uh, big changes there or with midtones. Not even with shadows too much. Um, I don't see any real need. Let's see if we can bring up structure just a bit. And certainly, we're now we're capturing a lot more detail uh, again in the, the the wood. A little bit more clarity, I think, is helpful. And maybe the vibrance again. Bring that up just a bit more. And finally, a little bit of highlights. Let's check and see if this can help us any more. It's all experimenting, it's all playing around, seeing what you like. Maybe a little bit more brightness and contrast. And again, let's see, did we make an improvement or did we make it worse by chance? Oops, wrong session. Uh, here we go, here's the session. So here's how the raw file came to us, and here's where we ended up. Certainly more dramatic, uh, more detail. Uh, we have got uh, in uh, the back here, 
in the clouds. I think, I think some good detail. You, you notice more color, more darkness there. Um, might be picking up a little touch of noise. Uh, the JPEG may have taken some of that away when the camera processed the file. Certainly most times the camera is adding a little bit of uh, noise reduction. There is a spot here and the, the J key will turn on, um, let's just show you here in the menu, uh, view, uh, show clipping. So anywhere that we uh, have uh, blown the highlights or we're, we're too dark on the, the blacks, uh, we're going to see that here. And certainly in our, um, in our raw file processing, we've got some of that. Um, and in fact, there was, this was probably blown before we even started editing at this little spot here. On the JPEG file, I think we'll see less of that. Well, the, the, certainly the darks are uh, a little bit of indication there, uh, but the highlights, so, so this spot here, in fact, let's turn it back on over here. So you see in the JPEG, we, we have not uh, blown the highlights over here. Again, the camera was protecting some of that for us, uh, undoubtedly, and gave us a file that, that you know, had not extended past uh, the ability to uh, to, to be reflected in the JPEG file. But over here in the raw file, we can do more things. We can take it a little further. Anyway, if I go back and, and turn off the, uh, the clipping there and just look at them side by side, is there a radical difference? No. But I tend to think the raw file is better. I think I have more latitude. Really, if I wanted to go uh, really kind of crazy with it and really crank up some things like uh, clarity, and I could even mask out some of the clouds so as to not to overdo it. I've got that kind of latitude. I could even crank up this clarity and then with a, a brush, I could make it apply only to this white, which would be kind of interesting. But it, when applied to the whole picture, it's certainly too much. But the, the raw file certainly gives us more latitude. And I hope that might be an interesting example for you. Is there a perfect answer? Should you use JPEG? Should you use, should you use raw? Well, the answer typically is yes. You know, do what works for you, do what your needs are. You're taking quick pictures, mostly to share on social media. JPEGs will be your friend, quick and easy, no problem. You want to get files that you can develop more fully and do more things with and stretch them further, and you're willing to pay the price on some hard drive space. These, these particular Fuji X-T2 files are about 50 megabytes, where the JPEG is maybe 8, 9, 10 at most. So substantial difference. Uh, if you shoot like I do sometimes with RAW and JPEG, now you're dealing with 60 meg instead of maybe just 10 meg uh, for a JPEG file. So you have to factor that in. Storage is not free. Well, anyway, I hope that helps just a little bit. Lots of other tools we could have explored, but I just wanted to show that contrast. Uh, is there a difference? Yes. Is it earth shattering? That'll be for you to decide in your particular case, but at least you see how Luminar handles it and uh, does a pretty good job in both cases, I think. Anyway, I hope that helps just a tiny bit. Have a great day.